Uh, I did prepare some slides, but if you do have any questions or you have a practical application of this, absolutely raise your hand and we can, we can start talking about specifics. But what I want you guys to walk away with from this, if there's one thing, I want you guys to know that it is possible to programmatically migrate from Blackboard and Canvas to Moodle, so migrating your content. So if you are a teacher or you're an administrator and you want to do this process, you absolutely can. I guess I gotta do it this way. <clears throat> so what is it? It's a tool that uh, is used to convert from one LMS platform to another. Uh, it does in fact preserve the course format. So uh, there are some other open source tools that are out there right now that basically go through and make copies of the content and drop it into the course. Oh, if I plug it in. Then, uh, then you do have the ability to do that. But again, it does, not, it does not take into account the order of your courses, how they were set up, et cetera. This works now. Thank you. Oh, nice. <clears throat> uh, so what, what this tool does, it does take into account things like images, videos, files, et cetera. Uh, and it does currently support both Blackboard and Canvas uh, bi-directionally. One thing we do not want to have in it is student data. So if you do have course content, that course backups that are made that has student data in it, you're going to want to have those removed. Uh, and I've had many, many people ask me about this. Is it possible to make it a Moodle plugin? And the answer to that is no. It's too complex. It's a completely different tech stack. Um, if there is a way that we can do it in the future with some other you know, subsystem or something like that, we will try to make it available. But the general process to take a course backup from the origin LMS, whether it's Canvas or Blackboard, you're gonna upload it to a location, uh, S3, SFTP, et cetera. Then that's when our team comes in. We actually will extract, analyze, and convert to the destination LMS format. Then what we'll do is a QA test. So that is automatically restored to a QA environment in Moodle. Uh, we review the content, make sure it's accurate, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand it off to your team to review in your destination LMS. So the asterisk here is yes, uh, this process can be batched in systems like Blackboard. Um, if you guys are the owners of the Blackboard instance. So if it is hosted with Blackboard, you're going to run into some problems uh, in that scenario. But you can still manually back up your courses and put them through this process and end up with a, uh, a Moodle course. One of the big things that clients have asked us or really haven't really started the conversation of asking us, but they've said, can we do X, Y, or Z? So the process of going through a migration from one system to another, if any of you guys have done it, it's extremely painful, it's extremely slow, it's extremely tedious, and you never want to do it again. So are there opportunities that you guys can do during this process, and I'm talking about programmatic opportunities, to look at your content and say, can we standardize it? Do we want to have the same look and feel through the same department or the entire university? Are there default activity types that you want to have accessible to every single course or every course within a specific department. And then also look at it from the, the perspective, is there content that you can remove? So is there content that's outdated? Is there, are there things that you can get rid of? Uh, another thing we can do programmatically is take things into account like keywords. So if you happen to be on a Blackboard system and you mention the name Blackboard, do you want to go through and programmatically change all of those to say Moodle or something else? Uh, another big one that we have had is large video files. So I don't know if any of you are teachers, but you grab some you know, giant video file that you've recorded, you put it into Moodle, and then every time you do a backup or Blackboard any other system, every time you do a backup, you end up with you know, 10, 15, 20 gigabyte file. I think the largest ones we've ever seen have been in the 50 to, 50 to 80 gigabyte size range. And so what we can do in this process is actually take that video, upload it to a streaming service, and then embed it into the course. So talking about those same courses that were 50 to 80 gigabytes, they walk away with a 200, let's say, megabyte course that can be easily restored into Moodle directly through the interface without having to do any, any backend stuff. Another item is that do you have any outdated file types and learning standards? Do you want to get rid of your SCORM content? Do you want to get rid of Adobe Flash files in this process? These are all the sorts of conversations of opportunities that you guys can have in this process from trans, uh, you know, converting from one system to another. 
by default, and this is the one that basically ships with the product, there are default templates. And over the past two years, we've worked with various organizations to come up with kind of the, the average organization of what you're going to uh, expect. So things like assignments are going to come over as assignments, et cetera. But we just talked about those opportunities and those opportunities can actually be put into customized templates. So if you do have you know, specific requirements that you do want to take advantage of, we can put those into a customized template and then process the courses for you. We do recommend that you work with, you include your faculty, stakeholders, admins, et cetera, in this process. You don't wanna create the template, go through the entire process and end up with a course that they're not happy with. So that's just something to take into account. The actual conversion process is quite fast. We've had courses that take seconds and some that take minutes. Uh, our typical turnaround time is, is, in, the, is in the days. Uh, but customizing templates will typically take, uh, you know, one to two weeks or longer if it's a if it's a larger organization. So here's a quick project example. We had an RFP uh, for a project to convert 8,000 Blackboard courses to Moodle. The client estimated in the RFP that it would take 12 to 15 months. And I think the only reason why we won the project is because we went in front of their board and said that we could do it in three months. Uh, they were very surprised. They wanted to see the technology. So we actually took 30 of their courses on the demo uh, in front of the board and we converted those courses live and then showed them what they look like. Uh, so basically we won the project and it ended up being one month for templating. So we met with stakeholders of all the different departments at the university and then two months of converting the 8,000 courses. So, uh, and, and it actually didn't really take two months to convert 8,000 courses. It was more a matter of we would run the process through, let's say, 1,000 courses or 500 courses. We would put it in front of the stakeholders and faculty. They would provide feedback, and then we would reprocess the courses again. So the, the template is really this time-intensive aspect of the project. The running or converting of the courses is, is actually pretty rapid. So getting into some of the specifics of the, um, the way that things can be converted, so things like activity types is what we call them in the Moodle ecosystem. So assignments are converted over to assignments. Rubrics are brought over where Moodle supports them, you know, i.e. within assignments. Some of the pitfalls we run into is other systems will support rubrics in, let's say, quizzes. Uh, discussion boards are converted to Moodle forums. And quizzes are converted with our default template uh, to the uh, basic Moodle question type. So the ones that are included in core. But additionally, like the ordering question type, which was now just brought into core, was one of the ones that was in our customized template. So that's also now available in the default template. But then getting into some specifics about uh, Blackboard, things like external HTML pages where you could just take a, a, you know, a, an HTML file with JavaScript and CSS and upload it to Blackboard. Uh, what we do is we're, we programmatically go through and sanitize that stuff to remove the JavaScript, and then we convert them to, to Moodle pages. So there's actually a routine that runs that does that. Uh, Blackboard pools, kind of like our question banks, those are converted to question banks on our end. Uh, and SCORM 1.2 packages are moved. So if they did happen to have a SCORM 1.2 package in Blackboard in their course, it's actually moved right over with, with no issues. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to go as fast as I can so I can get questions. <clears throat> and then any of the content types or activity types that are not supported, meaning that something that exists in a remote LMS that does not exist in Moodle, what we do is we put placeholders in. So it's a page, a Moodle page, that contains all the content in an organized manner that the teacher can then go through and actually make modifications and say, here's how I want to present this information moving forward. Again, with Canvas, uh, Canvas pages were pretty similar to Moodle pages. That was an easy way to, to move it over. But one of the things that we found is that SCORM packages cannot be converted from Canvas to Moodle. And that's because of the way that they store them. So they're stored with a third-party service. They're not actually stored in your course backup. And again, also with Canvas, we have the, the page placeholders for any unsupported content. And expectations we set at the very beginning of every project. We're going to do our best to make your final course as close to, let's call it, perfect uh, by the end. But we do like to remind them that faculty will want to go through. And there's going to be some manual aspects of what you have to do to get it up to a, uh, a polished format. So that's it. I kind of flew through that. But does anybody have any questions? Oh, thank you. Sure. 
Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think about the, the reasons and the, the drivers uh, when you guys get uh, projects like these. Uh, why are people moving from uh, Blackboard and Canvas? Is it always the money or is there any other aspect that's not so um, simple or evident uh, in your eyes since you have experience in, in this? So what, what's your take on, on that? I think it's specific to the platform. If we're looking at Blackboard, there are a lot of universities that were self-hosting and Blackboard discontinued the ability to self-host their uh, instances. So some of the, the universities actually have in their bylaws that they have to have it self-hosted. Um, other countries, so Canada specifically has it in their, um, they gave incentives to switch to Moodle. So there are a lot of Canadian universities that switch from Blackboard to Moodle. Uh, Canvas, on the other hand, tends to be a, uh, without getting too horrible down the hating on Canvas side of things, the salespeople tend to pitch it as you can do all of these amazing things. Yes, we can do that. Yes, we can do that. And then the teachers and faculty get into it and all of those promises are empty and they then want to switch to something that's going to give them flexibility and freedom, et cetera. So those are kind of the two that were the two scenarios that we've encountered. Thank you. And another quick thing, just for anybody that's in here that happens to know a teacher or a small institution that is doing this process, uh, we're happy to convert those courses for free. So if a teacher is, you know, happened to teach in Blackboard, you know, five years ago and they have these course backups and they're going to be moving to a Moodle institution, we're happy to convert those courses using the default template for free. Okay, I'm sure that David will be happy to continue talking about this. This is what the moods are about. So thank you very much, David. Thank you.